So when God said, when Paul, when Paul said, I am a prisoner of the Lord, that means that he's in handcuffs. In other words, I do only what God tells me. Jesus said the same thing. He said, I only do what the Father tells me. And he was a perfect servant. So that's why I lost the ambition to drive and all that stuff like that. Now, I'm not knocking people who have, I'm not saying get rid of your visions and all that stuff like that. That's your life. I'm talking about Kenneth. And it worked for me because as talented and gifted as I am, I, I, I could easily put a lot of strenuous effort in doing things that God did not call me to do. And so my life is narrowed as soon as, and I'm getting closer to the grave, folks, than I am to the cradle. The closer I, I mean, the longer I begin this walk with God, man, something happens on the inside. I begin to lose sight of the world. So some of the stuff the world into and Christians in the church into, I ain't into. Because something happened, it's just like layers, onion layers. He's peeling this off and peeling that off and peeling this off and peeling it off. Why? Because God is trying to get to the core of Kenneth. So it don't bother me. Someone said, well, did you watch the NBA playoffs or did you watch NFL? No, don't have time for it. Well, you're a different kind of dude. Yeah. <laughs> because I realized one day, folks, listen, I got three, three minutes, 58 seconds. I realized when I was home in, in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, I just had a stroke. At 50 years, I turned 50 years old. A week later, I had a stroke. Sitting down in that chair. I remember before I had the stroke, I heard the question, what would you do if you had one life, one, li one year to live? I asked my wife on the church, going to church one day about that. And folks, let me tell you, I was sitting there and night after night, I could not even sleep in my bed because I thought I would have had another stroke and that would have taken me out. The enemy bombarded me left and right. And you know what? I began to realize the things that are important and the things are, that are unimportant. I came close to death, people. So the thing about it is, is that you're going to talk, you're going to tell a man who's been close to death that you're going to have to do this and do this and get your vision together and get your goal together? No. God, my life is yours. I am a servant. Whatever your will is, your will be done. I don't live to fulfill my desires. I only live to fulfill his desires. And if this is what he wants me to do, I'll do it. And when he says, get there, I'll be there. When he says, get there, I'll be there. If he wants me behind a camera, I'll be there. Why? Because I don't live to fulfill my own plans and purpose for my life. I live to fulfill his. Thank you, God. That's all. There ain't no other reason to live. No other reason for Kenneth to breathe and exist than to fulfill God's purpose in my generation. And when I'm finished with my purpose, you know what? I want to go home. Amen. That means if I'm 56 years old, I'm ready to go. Because there's not, my wife asked me, if there's any place in the United States, you, in the world, would you like to live or wherever you want to live? I said, no, no place I can think of right now. I can't think of one place that I would love to live in the earth. Why? Because I would like to go home. I'm like E.T. I want to go home. That's hap that happened when I died to the world. So those things don't impress me anymore. Money just don't impress me. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. The newest car, the latest model, that don't impress me. None of that stuff impressed me. It doesn't. I really, I'm, I'm being absolutely honest. My wife can tell you, I, that's the guy she lives with. I, that's me. They didn't come overnight, but I begin to grow up and begin to see the things that are most important in life and the things that are unimportant. And stop taking me so seriously because I ain't all that in a bag of chips. So I say, well, how many people you got on your Facebook account? What does it matter? Who wants to follow me? Sometimes I don't want to live with me. I see y'all laugh. <laughs> y'all laugh. But how many of you know, uh, know that's the truth sometimes? Sometimes you don't even like yourself. I got to close. I didn't even get to talk about all of the faithfulness of God. But guess what, folks? He's faithful. But someone said you did good. He is so faithful. If you, can't, if you can't believe God for anything, believe him. He is faithful. One scripture I'll give you and I'll quit. Can I do that? 
Go to the book of Psalm, Psalm 37, verse number three. I'll close with that one. I don't know why I do notes anyway. I always go off script. <laughs> I thought one time before preaching was my passion. And I found out that God really didn't want preaching to be my passion. <laughs> it's like, are you serious? No, he don't. He wants to be my passion. He said, I will have no other gods before me. You know, there are people, ministers and preachers who have made their ministry their God. Yes, they have. Has nothing to do with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I remember when the Lord asked me, suppose I tell you to give it up. Would you do it? I was pastoring a church in South Florida, my wife and I. Suppose I told you, long before I gave it up, and he asked me the question, would you give it up? I say, yeah, Lord, I'll, I'll give it up. And when I gave it up, man, I felt like my life was over. I can't preach, I can't teach, and that's what I love to do. I love to see, I love to disciple people. I love to see, train leaders and, and see people grow in the fullness of, that's, I love to see that happen or whatever. People right before my eyes just blossoming and blooming in the things of God. And then I have to walk away from it. I have to walk away from it. And for years, I've preached and pastored over 20-something years all together, folks, the different churches I've pastored. And I had to leave it, walk away from it. Now what do you do? Is my life over? No. i just begun to live. Why? Because I needed to find my focus in him and not in what I do. My identity was coming from what I did and not who I'm in. So he's the stability in my life, man. He is. He is. He is the stability. Here's the last one. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Now, in the New King James Version, this is how it reads. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. What that tells us to do is this. Look at the faithfulness of God in times past. God's been faithful to do this. He's been faithful to do that. Go in the Bible and look at the different people that God made promises to and brought the promises to pass. Feed your spirit on the faithfulness of God. That's what he's saying. Dwell in the land and you feed on the faithfulness of God. So go back. Testimonies are so important. People need to hear what God has done for you. You need to tell somebody what God has done for you. Why? Because it, it, when God does something for you, you got something. David was told, the man, he told Paul, I'm told, not Paul, Paul, what did David call, what's the man called? Saul. I said Paul, but it's Saul. David told Saul, your servant kept, the, kept the, uh, his father's sheep. And he said, a bear and a lion came and took the sheep. I ran after it. And he said, I grabbed it by the beard and I smote it. And he said, the same God that delivered me from the, the, the lion and the bear will deliver me from this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What did David do? He rehearsed his past victories. In other words, he fed on the faithfulness of God. He looked back at how God's been faithful to perform his word and other things. So that means this uncircumcised Philistine is no different. You feed on the faithfulness of God. And you watch God bring his promises to pass. And you won't panic. You follow what I'm saying? You're just resting him. Yeah, God's going to do it. Well, when is he going to do it? He's going to do it. Closing. In the days ahead, the days to come, we're going to need to trust God's faithfulness. Amen. Because folks, I'm telling you right now, there are terrible times ahead of us yes. here in the United States as well. We're going to face some persecution that has already been set. The stage has been set. We will face persecution like the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the United States have never experienced. And you listen, a lot of this, our public assemblies is going to have to go underground. Mark my words. You heard it here. I'm telling you what's about to come. You don't think it happened? They got prayer out of schools, didn't they? public assembly is going to come. Listen, China has got one of the grossest, the fastest growing churches in the world. 
and it's underground. They don't have public assemblies and everything like that. They're persecuted people. They can get be killed if they're caught calling on the name of Jesus. You don't think that's going to come to the United States? Yes, it is. It's already in motion. Laws are being passed to take away our religious freedoms. But the religious freedom is not talking about the religious freedom like the Muslims and the Buddhists and all that stuff. Those people are okay. Guess what? It's the Christians. Those are the ones they're targeting, Christians. So in the days ahead, you're going to have to look to God for his faithfulness. Trust his faithfulness. God's going to bring you through. Stand on your feet. God's going to bring you through. There's some people in here that have given up. You've given up on that, that promise. 